Daenerys is the greatest dragon rider as evidenced by House of the Dragon. Daenerys Targaryen from Game of Thrones continues to be the best dragon rider ever, even as House of the Dragon introduces more dragon riders to the realm. So stay tuned to find out everything you need to know about Daenerys and why he is the best dragon rider of them all, along with every other need to know House of Dragon details. First up, the new Game of Thrones predecessor House of the Dragon has proved that Daenerys Targaryen is the best dragon rider. Here's why. Game of Thrones Daenerys Targaryen, played by Amelia Clark, is firmly established as the one, if not the best dragon rider in House of the Dragon. The Game of Thrones spin-off series depicts a period during the height of Targaryen dominance, following the doom of Valyria, when the number of dragons is at its highest. The mother of dragons manages to outperform all other dragon riders. Even though House of the Dragon possesses a large number of dragons and dragon riders, HBO's House of the Dragon covers the Targaryen Civil War, which spells the death of dragons in the entire realm. The last known dragon perished in the latter half of King Aegon III's reign, when the Dance of the Dragons severely reduced their population and led to their extinction for more than a century. In the Game of Thrones finale of the first season, Daenerys mysteriously appears with three dragons, Rhaegal, Viserion, and Drogon, leading the rebirth of the dragons in a new era, after entering the funeral pyre of Khal Drogo. However, Daenerys doesn't transform into a dragon rider until the Game of Thrones season 5 finale, when she rides Drogon to flee the Sons of the Harpy, where she demonstrates insanely good dragon riding abilities, probably the best we've seen of any character yet. The fourth episode of the television series House of the Dragon debuted the introduction of Cyrax, Caraxes, and Sea Smoke together with their dragon riders, Rhaenyra, Daemon, and Sir Laenor Valerion. However, these dragon riders all have one thing in common that Daenerys does not, dragon saddles. The dragons of House of the Dragon wear saddles to secure their dragon riders, just like horses do. However, throughout the entire run of Game of Thrones, Daenerys has never been seen using a dragon saddle. So, regarding Daenerys's dragon riding status, the A Song of Ice and Fire series has always been ambiguous. Still, George R. R. Martin's book, Fire and Blood, the inspiration for the show, finally confirms that dragon riders did use saddles during their battles and flights. While riding a dragon bareback is not uncommon, it is also not very common. The only documented instances of this are those of Rhaenyra's offspring, Aegon III on Stormcloud and Joffrey Valerion on Cyrax. Therefore, riding a dragon a lot of the time during battles and managing to hang on without dismounting is defying gravity, and even Prince Daemon Targaryen flew on a dragon using a saddle. Because it contradicts House of the Dragon, Game of Thrones' absence of a dragon saddle undoubtedly raises some questions. Daenerys certainly has the advantage in terms of dragon control, even though she is entirely self-taught and hasn't had the opportunity to learn like the rest of the Targaryen family. Still, it is bizarre that she does not always use a saddle when the rest always do. But make sure to let us know your thoughts. Did you find this odd too? Or is she really just that good she doesn't even need one? Speaking of House of the Dragon, we thought it was only right to explain some of the dragons featured heavily in the Game of Thrones predecessor. The newest HBO drama House of the Dragon is rooted in the Game of Thrones universe and is expected to feature more dragons than its sequel series. The fantastical creatures are anticipated to be included a considerable amount in House of the Dragon, because it is based on George R. R. Martin's book Fire and Blood. House of the Dragon draws a lot of inspiration from many elements from Fire and Blood, and presents the Targaryens at their most formidable, as will also be the case with the family's fire-breathing friends. Now we know that the dragons possessed by House Targaryen survived a volcanic eruption in Valyria that destroyed many of the dragons of Westeros. The House of the Dragon Dragon timeline depicts the Targaryens' rule over Westeros following the employment of these dragons, to aid in the Targaryens' conquest of the continent and establishment of the Seven Kingdoms. So here's a little synopsis about each of the creatures that will be seen in House of the Dragon. First up, Caraxes. Daemon Targaryen, portrayed by Matt Smith, is one of the main characters in House of the Dragon. Therefore, the show's other main, fire-breathing protagonist will be Daemon's dragon friend. Caraxes, the dragon owned by Daemon, 
Daemon is one of the more mature and substantial members of the Targaryen clan. Caraxes is known as the Bloodworm because of the red tint of his scales. Aemon Targaryen first sat atop Caraxes, but Aemon was murdered by a crossbow bolt, leaving Caraxes without a rider. Aemon's nephew Daemon then claimed the beast. Next up, Cyrax. The first scene in House of the Dragon gives us exactly what we wanted to see. Rhaenyra flying over the city on her yellow-scaled dragon Cyrax to the dragon pit in King's Landing. Since she was a kid, Cyrax, a dragon hatched from the egg left in Rhaenyra's crib, has been her devoted friend. Cyrax is named after a Valerian deity. Rhaenyra and Cyrax don't appear to have experienced much combat based on their ages. When Rhaenyra's rule is challenged, that is certain to change. Now Cyrax hasn't yet demonstrated all of her combat skills. When Rhaenyra faces Daemon at Dragonstone, she finally gets to ride her dragon with a purpose. Previously, she had let her dragon to cremate the bodies of both her mother and young brother. With her present, she manages to stop a bloodbath and persuade Daemon to return her the dragon egg he stole, originally meant for Rhaenyra's younger brother. Another key dragon includes Vermithor. King Jaehaerys, the grandfather of King Viserys, is portrayed by Michael Carter, one of the cast members of House of the Dragon. Jaehaerys' former dragon, Vermithor, will still play a significant role in the drama, despite his advanced age. Vermithor, often known as the Bronze Fury, is a bronze dragon and was once Westeros' third largest dragon. In Fire and Blood the novel, Vermithor is depicted ultimately being ridden by a brute named Hugh the Hammer during the Targaryen Civil War, known as the Dance of Dragons. Maelys is another dragon featured in the spin-off to Game of Thrones. Maelys, also referred to as the Red Queen, is Rhaenys Targaryen's devoted dragon. Her red body is covered with many copper stripes. Before Rhaenys, Viserys and Daemon's mother, Alyssa, rode the Red Queen, while carrying both of her boys strapped to her chest as infants. Rhaenys claimed Maelys after Alyssa passed away. Rhaenys was once a contender for the Iron Throne, but the Westeros Council rejected her claim and decided to install Viserys I as the next king. In We Light the Way, Rhaenys transports Maelys from Driftmark to King's Landing for the wedding of her son Lenore, the Ornate. Maelys is one of Westeros' swiftest dragons according to Fire and Blood. Next up, Vagar is an essential dragon in the show. Readers of George R. R. Martin's books eagerly anticipated Vagar's debut in the new series. Vagar, one of the oldest and largest dragons alive at the time of House of the Dragon, is more than a century old. The Queen Visenya Targaryen, one of Aegon the Conqueror's sister wives, was the one who rode Vagar first. After her, Viserys' father, Balon, rode Vagar. Vagar was not ridden for a while after Balon, and it wasn't known where he was. Now we know that Lena Valerion, played by Nana Blondell, is Vagar's third rider, and is also the one he discovers last. After their marriage, she went to Pentos with Daemon, and the locals watched in awe as the two displayed their dragons. However, in episode 6, Lena met a tragic end when she went to Vagar and demanded that he use his dragon fire to kill her, rather than put up with the rigors of impossible labor that would result in her death. Readers of Fire and Blood will be aware that Alicent's son, Aemond, rode Vagar once more after this, claiming ownership of the beast. Now, given Vagar's enormous size, it is safe to believe that this dragon is a real threat. And finally, Dreamfire. Now, Dreamfire has yet to be claimed, but in episode 6, we catch a glimpse of her in the dragon pits. Aemond approaches her and she breathes fire at him like a dragon. She had previously been written by Rhaena Targaryen the eldest sister of King Jaehaerys. However, we know that the second eldest child of Viserys and Alicent, Princess Helena Targaryen, eventually claims the blue dragon in Fire and Blood. Dreamfire, who is rumored to be the mother of several other dragons, and Helena form a close friendship. The idea that Dreamfire gave birth to the eggs that would later hatch into Drogon, Viserion, and Rhaegal continues. And there you have everything you need to know about House of the Dragon and why Daenerys is the best dragon rider of them all. Also, we touched on the dragons that feature throughout the series and a bit of their background story. Now make sure to let us know your thoughts down below, and as always, thanks for watching!